This is a specialized Kinevo SL. It's basically a specialized enduro, but with a motor. You know, the problem with doing these bike reviews so early in the season is that there are no bike parks open. And this is really a bike park bike. It's definitely a gravity oriented bike, but I want to see if this bike can make a good trail bike as well. Maybe this can be your only bike. It's super cold today and windy. I thought the winter was over, but I was wrong. But anyway, let's get on with it. As I mentioned, this bike is very similar to the Specialized Enduro. It's basically the same bike, the same type of frame. There are some minor differences though. For instance, the chainstay is a bit longer on this bike to accommodate for that motor down there. And of course, it weighs a little bit more. This particular bike is a specialized Kinevo SL Expert, which means it's got a Fox 38 performance up front and it's a Fox X2 performance in the rear. I did weigh this bike myself, but this bike has got some aftermarket wheels on it with inserts as well. And with pedals and Maxxis downhill casing tires and inserts, it weighs 20 kilos exactly. According to Specialized, it should weigh 19 kilos without pedals. And I think that number is quite accurate actually. And that's not far off from the Specialized Enduro. I think it weighs around 16 kilos or something. So this expert version is a highly spec bike and I wouldn't want to change anything on the bike. So here's a quick roundup of the specs. We've already covered the suspension components and apart from that there's a SRAM X01 drivetrain and SRAM code RS brakes with adjustable levers. The trusted Roval Traverse alloy wheels are wrapped in butchered tires with grid casing and a soft T9 compound in the front and a somewhat harder T7 compound in the rear. The dropper is 170mm in size S4 and S5 and there's a neat little tool right here, complete with a chain tool and with room for a spare link. So geometry wise this is a very big bike naturally, plenty enough for most trails. It's got big brake rotors as well, it's got 220 in the front, 200 in the rear and it's got a very slack head angle as well. And this bike does follow the trend that the Turbo Leo set with an angle set up here and there's also a flip chip down there to lower the bottom bracket a bit, but also to shorten the chain stake. Yeah, and that motor, it's so tiny that you can hardly see it. It's down there. It's the same motor that you can find on the Turbo Levo SL and also on the Vardo SL, I think, and the Como, the specialized Como, those commuter bikes. The battery sits here. It's a 320 watt hour battery. The whole system is a 48 volt system, which is quite uncommon in EMTBs. There are some benefits with that, with better efficiency, but I've already made a video about that, so I won't talk about it here. The power that this motor produces is 240 watts, both peak and continuous power, and peak torque is 35 Nm. So that's not a lot, but that's a trade-off for having such a light bike. So more on that on the test ride. My first thought is, it's a big bike, why not just slap a big motor on it like they did on the Turbo Levo? But I guess Specialized wanted to build a lightweight enduro e-bike. To clarify things, there is a regular Canevo as well, which has got the same full power motor as the Turbo Levo. But that bike is based on the Stump Jumper, as the Turbo Levo and as the Turbo Levo SL. The Canevo SL is very different from the regular Canevo, especially when you look at the rear suspension, which is much more advanced on the Canevo SL. I remember when I tested the Specialized Enduro, how much I liked the rear end of that bike. And my conclusion was that the Enduro was the best and most fun Enduro bike that I've ever taken to a bike park. So top marks there. What I struggle to understand is where the Kenevo SL fits. You don't usually need an e-bike in bike parks, or do you? I already kind of know what the bike is like in a bike park from the Enduro. But how does this bike work on my local trails? To understand that, I set up a series of tests. I need to get to and from my local trails, and that involves a few kilometers of asphalt and often a long climb, which takes time, energy, and is really boring, especially on long travel bikes with sticky tires. The SL 1.1 motor makes this commute to breeze, and up that long climb, I can easily reach twice the speed than on a normal bike. 
It's great to access the trails quickly and without too much sweat. It's a hurdle that's removed and changes the dull transports to a positive thing. While we're up here, let's test the bike in these little jumps. I've had over a dozen bikes here, and I know that long travel bikes can feel sluggish. They usually come alive at speed. I have around 25% sag in the rear, which is too much on this bike. But the consequence is that this bike jumps almost as well as any downcountry bike. Sure, you have to work a bit, but when you do, this bike plays along. This goes hand in hand with my experience from the Enduro. There is some pop in this bike, much thanks to its rear suspension, which seems to be more than a one-trick pony. This is the interesting bit. There are at least two things that happen when you strap a small motor on a long travel bike. First, there's just so much more flow to my riding than it is on analog bikes. It's easy to keep the pace, even in small climbs and in tricky situations. For being a big EMTB with a slack head angle, it is a surprisingly nimble bike and it feels easier to throw around this bike on narrow trails than the Turbo Levo. Those extra kilos on the Turbo Levo do make a difference. The low center of gravity on the Kinevo SL helps too. With that said, the Turbo Levo SL is still more the right bike for this terrain though. But with help from the motor and the big suspension, I can ride over undulations, roots, baby heads. I can ride everywhere. There's nothing that can stop me. Oh. The second thing that happens when you strap a small motor on a long travel bike is that you magically remove any pedal bob. There is some bob on the Enduro. Not much, but it's there. But on the Kinevo SL, you don't need to push the crank so hard since the motor helps and I find myself using a higher cadence, which further smooths out things. In this sense, it doesn't feel that the bike has too much travel. In mellow terrain, the power from the motor is enough, but when it gets deep, the bike quickly starts to feel like an analog bike, especially when riding next to a full-fat EMTB. The highest setting, turbo, provides less power than the tour mode on a Bosch motor. It's more of a gentle push by a helping hand, than the surge of power that you will get from a Shimano or Bosch motor. But overall, I was skeptical if the Canevo SL would work on my local trails, but I've changed my mind. It's still a gravity bike, but for occasional rides in the woods, sure, why not? My brother comes from the other direction. He is interested in upgrading his older Trek EMTB, and a big specialized with that motor that we've ridden before is very enticing. But at the end of his test ride, he took the Kinevo SL off his shortlist for a couple of reasons. Firstly, the motor is simply too weak. He usually rides in eco or tour mode on his trek, but for the steeper climbs there simply isn't enough grunt. Secondly, it's too much travel for his local trails. The bike floats over everything, which is great, but the old Trek is nimbler and feels more active or playful in the terrain he usually rides. So, there we are. I'm rather convinced that the Kinevo SL does work fine on my local trails, even though a Turbo Levo SL would suit the terrain much better. And my brother, who is in the market for a new bike, has changed his mind and wants something a little bit more all-round, like the Turbo Levo. Subscribe!